in the second video we are going to look at constructing a Bourne Harbour cycle for an ionic compound where you have um, cations and anions with multiple charges. We're going to look at aluminium oxide, which is quite a complex example actually, because you've got multiple charges on both the cation and the anion. This is, if you make sure you've got worksheet 2 open as you're watching the video, this is going to take you through question 1 on that worksheet. Uh, so, let's have a look. You are asked to calculate the uh, lattice enthalpy of aluminium oxide. Now, I hope you know, or at least could work out, that the formula of aluminium oxide is Al2O3. If you don't or can't, then I would seriously consider stopping this video and going back to some basics. Um, so, let's start then with the bottom line of our cycle, where I'm going to put... Is this better? Yes, it's better. Right, I'm going to put the formula of my ionic compound. This pen is wet. Right, next line up, I'm going to have my elements in their standard states, and then the arrow going down from that is the enthalpy of formation. It is an exothermic process, so I've got aluminium, which exists as a solid in its standard state and I've got oxygen which exists as a gaseous molecule in its standard state. Currently however these are not balanced so I've got Al2O3. Obviously you cannot just do that and I say obviously and yet some people will. If you do do that that implies that aluminium exists as a diatomic molecule which it does not, it is a metal, okay? So instead, we're gonna do that. We've got O3, so we need to, we can't just change that to a three. We can't find a three in the front because that then means we've got six atoms. So we're gonna do three over two, okay? Right, next up then, we're gonna start atomizing. Remember, we atomize, we ionize, ionize, and then down for <coughs> lattice enthalpy, sorry. Old cough, old phlegmy cough. Right, so I'm going to come up, I'm just coming over here a minute, up because this is an endothermic process, atomization is endothermic, and I'm just simply going to go from 2Al solid to 2Al gas, and I've not done at this point anything to oxygen. Okay, right, so I've atomized my aluminium. Next up, I'm going to atomize my oxygen. So aluminium staying as it is, plus O3, so I've got, oh, sorry, 3O gas. Okay, so now everything's a gaseous atom, I need to get my gaseous ions. So I'm going to start with aluminium. The charge on an aluminium ion is 3 plus. So I'm going to need to do the first ionisation energy, the second ionisation energy, and then finally the third. Okay? These are always uh, endothermic processes. There's, it's not like electron affinity where it changes whether it's first or second. They are always endothermic. Okay? Energy is required to remove those electrons. And again, you need to be able to explain on a separate note um, as you're looking at unit 8 at the minute in conjunction with unit 9 looking at the trends down uh, group two um, as to how easy that is to do. Looking at shielding, looking at the effect of nuclear charge, all of that kind of stuff, um, and the electrostatic forces of attraction. Anyway, so we're gonna go then to 2Al plus, that's gaseous. We've not done anything to oxygen, but we have removed an electron. Now, actually, what we've removed here is two electrons because we've got two aluminium atoms that have become aluminium ions. Okay, next up then, we form our aluminium two plus into gas, nothing's happened to oxygen. And again, we've moved another two electrons, so we've actually got four in total now. And then finally, this pen's rubbish as well. Uh, finally, we've got our aluminium three plus ions and a total of six electrons. And we're going to need those six electrons to form three 
oxygen to minus ions, okay? Right, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm just gonna do some labeling here. So that is uh, enthalpy of formation, uh, this is enthalpy of atomization, that's enthalpy of atomization, uh, that's for O, that's for AL. This is first ionization energy, second ionization energy, third ionization energy. Right, so now I'm going to start making my anion, so the electron affinity for, um, of oxygen is what's been measured here. And as you remember, the first electron affinity is an exothermic process. As that electron combines with the atom, energy is released. So I'm going to do a line here. I'm going to have 2Al3 plus gas plus 3O minus. And I'm going to be left with three electrons because of those six, three of them have formed three. There were three oxygen atoms to combine with and they have, so we've got three O minus. That, as we said, is an exothermic process. However, second electron affinity by which we form the two minus ions, that is an endothermic process. So we're gonna come back up, okay? I'm gonna draw another line here. My arrow points up, it's gonna be higher. It's an endothermic process. We need to put energy in to overcome those repulsive forces. So I've now got two Al3 plus. Oh, and I've missed the state symbol there. It's easily done, easily done. Um, plus gas, plus 3O2 minus, and no electrons feature here because we've used them all in the formation of our anion. Right, we're now, if I just extend that, we're now in a position <clears throat> to come down there, okay? And this is going to be what we're trying to calculate, which it says, uh, yeah, so that is your lattice enthalpy. question mark there. It's going to be a negative value. It's highly exothermic and it's going to be quite a big value. So last time we looked at how you would add all of these up, take away whatever value you've already got on this side and whatever's left tells you the, the value of the, miss, you know, the missing value. Exactly the same process happens this time except we need to take into account, if I just label that, the fact that we have got our uh, um, ionization, sorry, first electron affinity being exothermic and the second one being endothermic. So we need to measure the difference between these two and that number we need to add on to here because essentially what we're looking at is the total energy change on this side is going to